parents who migrate seek to enhance the life of children from a material perspective while remaining aware of their need of protection. However, as they leave the country, their power depends on the measures taken by authorities at state level or European level. This is why a consortium of NGOs and academic institutions from Romania, Moldova and Ukraine have implemented a two and a half years project seeking to improve these measures. The rights of children must be prioritized by all parties involved in social protection and it is essential that policies understand and support families as a whole entity. Our overall emphasis is on recognizing transnational families as active agents seeking to protect their children who are left behind, moving away from a perspective of abandoned children. The policies we recommend aim to support these families in their transnational context, acknowledging their interconnectedness of social protection across borders. Social protection is a communal endeavour and duty involving states, NGOs, religious organisations. But the European Union has a major responsibility in encouraging policies and measures at transnational level. The main four recommendations we want to underline here are 1. The EU should create a transnational social protection system across borders. This would include institutional communication, common databases, hotlines, mutual information on legislation, collaborative policy development teams. 2. The EU should encourage policies of family unification between countries. 3. The bilateral agreements between the main countries of origin and the main receiving countries should be signed and publicised so that families become aware of them. 4. The EU should amend refugee protection laws to facilitate relationships with family members. As a consequence, children left behind in the country of origin should be the beneficiaries of these measures. Allowances given to parents who work legally for children left at home. Access for these children to health services in the destination countries as co-insured persons. Temporary fee access to education systems in destination countries if parents decide to bring their children with them. Migrants would be better informed about their rights and duties in the country of destination, including services available through countries' offices. These benefits should be granted quickly and efficiently and should not be conditional on the family's integration in the host country. We need to be aware of the temporary nature of this labour migration.